Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Midland Community Stadium for homecoming 2018 as the Midland High Chemics hosting the Mount Pleasant Oilers. I'm Dave Marsh, bringing you all the action along with the old ball coach, Frank Altimore, and uh, we have a great matchup in store. Over the years, coach, Midland-Mount Pleasant game is, there's been a lot on the line often, and it's usually a big game. Tonight should be no exception. Well, this is one of those games that uh, has all the probability of determining who's going to win the Valley on uh, the Blue Division. So we got two good teams that are really coming into their own. Mount Pleasant is 5-0, and but unfortunately Mount Pleasant's record, while it's 5-0, and its opponent's record is not so good. Right. They're 4-21, um, they're and 21. Wow. so it's uh, it, in that respect. Midland has come on strong. But, again, Midland has played the last three weeks against an opponent that have only won one game. So, you know, we have our two games. Well, uh, Heritage has won two games. So, you know, they're unknowns. Right. And that's the way this game is going to be. I think there are some cool keys to the game that really come into play here. And as we look at those, it really will decide, I, I think, how this ball game is going to go. Uh, let's, let's bring up our keys of the game, if we could. And we'll start off with uh, with Midland. Midland has to dominate the line of scrimmage. You can't let Mount Pleasant push it around. Midland must move the chains. It, it cannot, it, it's not going to get easy touchdowns. They've got to move the chains and hope to, to, to really slow the game down a little bit. And finally, they, their kick game has to give them good field position. And when Midland has good field position, they win the game. Now, for Mount Pleasant, and this is crucial, they must have a big game from their quarterback. And that will allow them to have some easy touchdowns, uh, long runs, good passes. But more important, nobody all year long has been able to control Midland's blitz. If Mount Pleasant cannot control the blitz, they cannot win the ball game. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Midland is three and two coming in. They lost the first two games to a couple of really tough teams, Traverse City West and Carmen Ainsworth, and then made a switch at quarterback, brought up Al Money from the junior varsity, and uh, with Money at quarterback, they won their last three. So uh, uh, the young quarterback has done a, a great job, and it kind of seemed to have righted the ship. And... Uh, and uh, won those last three ball games. Well, I think, you know, when they played, uh, oh, here comes the national anthem. Yeah, we're gonna send it on down for the national anthem by the Chemica Meister Singers. Singers with our national anthem We're in front of a big homecoming crowd that has filtered in, and uh, okay. it's, it's been an interesting uh, season so far here at Midland Community Stadium. As everybody knows, the, there's the fire in the press box, and for the first few games, had to close down the whole home stands, put everybody on the other side. But they've opened up a good portion of the home stands tonight. And really, Eric Albright and his Staff have done a good job with the makeshift press box here. It's not a bad setup. Not bad at all. It's very good. Nice so, job. So kudos to uh, Athletic Director Eric Albright. 
um, who we recently had the honor of uh, awarding the Bob Stopper Coach of the Year, much deserved what? after a great season coaching the Kelly baseball team. So as we uh, get closer to kickoff here, as we mentioned, uh, Mount Pleasant 5-0 coming in, Midland 3-2, three, three straight wins for the Chemex. The, two, the teams with the top two defenses in the Saginaw Valley Blue Division, Mount Pleasant's only given up 22 points in five games, very impressive. Midland's given up 68. The uh, offensively, Dow High is the top team in the division right now. Mount Pleasant comes in at number two and Midland at number three. And so, on paper, it's a this is a close matchup. Well, you know the six, the 22 is very impressive, but again, the 22 is against three teams that has not have not won a game, mm -hmm. and so that that kind of skews it out of line. The 68 is a good score. I mean, that's that's yeah. a number that you want, considering uh, Dow's at the same number with 107. So right. that's. Uh, you know, uh, a look at what's, what the future tonight is going to be. It, we, I doubt if we're going to see a 59-46 <laughs> right. game. I think we're going to see a 17-14. Uh, could very well be decided by a field goal. Both teams have good kickers. Uh, I'm really impressed with uh, Mount Pleasant's quarterback, uh, Jackson Ostrowski. He's had a good season so far. He has some good runners. Zach Mogg's a good runner. Uh, uh, they have a pretty good tight end, and they have some uh, uh, players that, that know what uh, where the end zone is, which is always a thing about it. But I will say this. Playing Mount Pleasant over the years and coaching against them, they are very susceptible to reverses. Okay. So if we happen to see that in the game, understand that they, are, they, they fly to the ball. They have a great anticipation. They have... Uh, as to where the ball is going, but then that leaves them open to bootlegs, throwbacks, and reverses. So, Mount Pleasant, both teams very well coached and uh, um, to kick off for have the excellent others. teams annually. And so we're about to get underway. Mount Pleasant will kick it off to Midland to receive, and we are underway here, homecoming 2018. on the carry, not gonna get very far. Good special teams coverage by, by Mount Pleasant. That's Carter Grove on the return. We'll get out to about the 14 yard line. And uh, the Midland offense will come on out. The starting offensive line at center, 51 James Harris, Solomon Thomas at left guard, Joe Cullinane at right guard, number 55, Ethan uh, Vollmering, left tackle and Cameron White at right tackle. One thing happened on that kickoff, Carter Grove ran it back, but he is, he's limping out there. And I'm, that really concerns me because he's a key cog in the Midland passing game. First and 10, Chemex from their own 15. Quick handoff for Midland, cuts up, he's gonna get maybe a couple yards is uh, Christian Gordon. Gordon, Gordon number 10, a running back. And then also uh, in the starting Coach lineup, number 12, Peyton Andrew Bob. High is the tight end. 19, Caden Jacobs at fullback. You mentioned Carter Grove. Keep your eye out on him. He's one of the top receivers on the team, as is number three, Tommy Johnston. Johnstone. And the sophomore, Al Money, number 15, at the quarterback duties. A little swing pass. It's actually a run. Cuts up field. Johnstone dives ahead to the 21-yard line. Tommy Johnstone is the son of Rob Johnstone, who was uh, an outstanding receiver in the 1980s. Third and three. Bring up the third and four for the Chemex. That was technically a run to Johnstone. A little uh, pass in the flat. As you can see what I mean about Mount Pleasant's ability to run to the ball quickly. Yeah. Dow has attacked the perimeter twice. Mount Pleasant has some good size on that defensive line. Johnstone in motion. Big handoff. Money looking, looking, can't find anything. He's gonna scramble, but he swarmed under at the 20. And it'll be a three and out for the Chemex on their first possession. 
great quickness by Mount Pleasant. Good coverage downfield. Money had nowhere to, to throw the ball. He tried to tuck and run, but uh, just a lot of white all around him. So Max Fisher, number nine, is doing the punting duties. Joe Ostrowski back to return for Mount Pleasant. Line drive punt will go out of bounds at the 49. And so good field position for Mount Pleasant to start things out. You mentioned Midland trying to control the exactly, field possession exactly game, but uh, Mount Pleasant flipped the field quickly here. And uh, this is terrific field position for Mount Pleasant. And Midland's defense will be tested right away because Mount Pleasant's already in four down territory. Right. Up front for the Chemex, 54 Ethan Vollmering, 64 Cam White. 42, Sam Hine. Linebackers, Drew Johnson, Andrew Capua, Caden Jacobs, and Christian Gordon. Ostrowski calls the signals. He's gonna keep it himself. Great job. Good penetration by the Chemic Jackson line. Ostrowski. Nowhere to go, it's gonna be no gain. Back initially by Andrew Capua. Capua Brady was uh, in on the, on the well. stop. Uh, among some others. Good job by the okay. defensive Second front up. just uh, holding their ground. Might gain a half yard on the play. In the secondary for Midland, number 11, Brady Woods at safety. Also at safety, 20, Eli Gordon. And at the cornerback, Ethan Richard, number two, and Grove, number 14. Back to pass, there's gonna be a screen. Oh, that was sniffed out. Beautifully by the Chemex again. Capua was all over it. No gain again for Mount Pleasant. Tremendous defense out of the Chemex. Very swarming and not being sucked in on the screen. Beautiful job. Coach Mattner earlier in the week said uh, one of their things they were trying to do is not give up big plays on play action or screen, and they uh, certainly uh, sniffed that one out. Third and 10 for the Oilers. Watch out for a pass to Joe Ostrovsky, the brother of Jackson. Jack back to pass, fires down the middle, just out of his reach. And uh, Ostrovsky's pass intended for Luke Taylor. Luke Taylor, the intended receiver. And uh, had a lot of zip on that ball. He just overthrew him. Bring up fourth and 10. And you're right, coach. Said four down territory. This might be a it might be a quick might kick Might be here. a pooch kick. Because there's nobody back deep at all for Midland. That'd be a pretty good call, actually. He's audibling. And it is a quick kick. Takes an Euler bounce. It's going to be close into the end zone. Great effort by uh, the coverage man for uh, Mount Pleasant, Luke Taylor. Good strategy. Just didn't quite get the execution. Now, here's the thing. Pooch kicks can get blocked. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, you, you, you're allowed one pooch kick. Yeah. After that, they're going to get blocked. So, first and 10, Chemex. Uh, based on the first two series, we could be in for a defensive struggle here, both three and outs. Money fires. Scott Grove hit immediately. He tried to get extra yards. He may have fumbled the ball. It looked like they had forward progress. And uh, they are going to give it to Mount Pleasant. He was fighting for extra yards. Boy, I sure thought they may call a forward progress on that. But the ball popped wow. loose, and the first break goes to the Oilers. Monstrous turnover. Grove caught it, had about a six yard pickup, and he just kept fighting for more yardage. Take another look at it here. You can see right there, he turns, and he, he really doesn't have control of it as of right now, and there it popped out as he was making a turn. Boy, I went for in progress. And 
Midland defense, uh, Ostrowski keeps it. He's going to get about Joe four. Carter Grove, Andrew Kapilov on the tackle. Gain of three, second and seven. Good job again by the Kemick defense. Mount Pleasant in their all whites out. tonight. Mid them their traditional blue jerseys with yellow pants. Beautiful night here at uh, Community Stadium. Got a little fall crispness to it, but not terribly cold. Beautiful night for high school football. Handoff. It's to uh, Mog. Mog. He's a junior. He's their leading uh, rusher on the season. That's pretty much what we're going to expect out of Mount Pleasant. That crush kind of game. They're in great field position right now. I, I think they're going to run it right at Midland and, and challenge them. Third and four. Third and about four. Mog, the leading rusher, actually, in the Saginaw Valley League Blue Division. 606 yards coming in, six touchdowns. 6.8 yards per carry. Don't be surprised if we see him tote the pigskin again here on third and three. He does get the handoff. Has a little hole, but it's uh, covered up. It's a little bit shy of the first down. Zach It'll be fourth and one. Maybe a little less than one. Just shy of the first down. Brings up the fourth down. it might just keep running behind that big offensive line. That offensive have. line is impressive. Yeah. They are moving people off the ball, and it's Midland's uh, linebackers that are really doing an exceptional job of coming up and making the tackles. Quarterback sneak. That was Jackson Ostrowski with the sneak. He's going to pick up the Jackson first down, Ostrowski move the, the chains keeper. inside down, the 20 down to the 19. See, this is what makes Mount Pleasant so tough. They do not want to make mistakes. They don't want to give you the ball. They're just going to grind it out. They know this is going to be a low-scoring game. It's not going to be a, a, a 50s game. It's just going to be a grind them out kind of game. Uh, I like their game plan. Two tight ends set here. A little flip to Mog. Breaks free, and he's going to go into the end zone for the touchdown. Zach, Mog, touchdown. That was just a power lineup. Two tight ends, just a quick pitch, went right between the end, the tight end and the tackle and a big hole and he just uh, bolted through. Okay, look. here we go. Now we're gonna see Mog come around the corner here. Fake. Evan Brown. There's the fake to the guy. To Little Jackson quick Morgan. pitch, beautiful block by the lead blocker. And now we're in the end zone without any trouble. Beautiful job. Extra point blocked. Great That's job. The the Flying in was Eli the Gordon field. to snuff out the extra point. He, boy, he's just Eli good motor Gordon coming off the, the end. Took a look at that extra point. Came off the corner. Both were untouched. You see it. Wasn't even close. He just uh, almost could have caught that. And with nope. five fifty-five remaining in the first quarter, it's Mount Pleasant six. Midland zero. Nobody has better special teams than Midland High in every aspect. That's been for every years. Every aspect. That's that's a definitely a chemic tradition. The weakest aspect of Midland's special team is this right here, uh, kickoff returns. I used to tell our return guys, if you catch the ball in the corner and run to the middle, two things are going to happen. Number one, you're not going to get any yards, and number two, we're going to get a penalty. Yeah because you just can't protect it. Meanwhile, their kickoff coverage is generally among the best that you can, you can get. So Mount Pleasant here to kick off for the second time with the 6-0 lead. They converted on that turnover. That's what teams need to do. When you get a, get a break, you take advantage of it. Kickoff back to the seven. Cuts back to left and swarmed under again. This is a nice play by uh, Hackbarth Jacob return. Higby. Wrapped Hack up by Jacob Higby. Hackbarth on the return for Midland. 
See, this is uh, tough sledding for Midland. Uh, you get the ball inside the 30 yard line, it's, it's hard to, you gotta flip this field a little bit to get better field position. Yeah, right now, um, Mount Pleasant's uh, kind of beaten Midland at their own game a little bit. The entire half quarter so far has been on this side of the field. Handoff to is it Jacob, number 19. Nice little uh, gain of about four for Jacobs. You see the rules, you look at Mount Pleasant Wrapped next time when we, you see Shell. them line up. They have seven in the box. Now, when you have seven in the box, that says pass. Uh, they are def they, they are saying to Midland, you can pass. We're going to let you pass the ball, but we're not going to let you run the football. And the, the seven up front are pretty tight and close in there. Grove and Jacobs in the backfield. Money's going to keep it up the middle. Not Money much the keeper, doing there. For the Maybe gain the yard. We'll call it third and a long five for Midland. Boy, you just feel they got to move these chains. If not, Mount Pleasant will get the ball again in great field position. Well, you can see the wind. The wind is going is uh, in Midland's face right now. There's that little swing pass to Jacobs. Cuts up, but great pursuit again by Mount Pleasant. Boy, the play looked like it was going to go for big yardage, but uh, a lot of white jerseys swarmed, and he's going to be brought down at 31, and Midland will have to punt it again. Now, in order for that play to work, you have to have exceptional blocking on the perimeter. At that time, the, 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 the blocking was just not there. Joe Ostrowski back to the Mount Pleasant is very to quick to the football. Fisher to punt again. High snap, brings it down. And off the side of his foot, oh boy. Punch goes out of bounds. That did not take over cover much ground. Forward. Remember Dave, we said earlier in our broadcast about our keys to the game, and we said field position through the kick game. And right now Mount Pleasant is taking advantage yep. of field position through the kick game. And he will take over on the Chemic 40. Third possession for Mount Pleasant. The worst starting position was their own 49. So the middle of defense being called upon here once again. 357 to go in the first quarter. Little shovel pitch is a nice play. Um, Hunter Norris took that uh, was technically a pass. And he's going to pick up about eight Woods. yards on the seven yards on the play. Looked like he was going to pitch it to Mog, and instead he flipped it up to uh, Norris. Brady Woods made a terrific play and saved the touchdown. Yeah, it sure looked like he was about to break yeah, free. Yeah, about to break it. And uh, Woods sniffed that one out. Second and three for the Oilers. Joe Ostrowski split way to the right. And up to Mog. Plows ahead. He's going to be a little shy of the first. Is that Just Mog? get the sense of uh, Mount Pleasant going to be content. Run four Cap plays. On the stop. Just up third run it and say, Dare. I dare you to stop us. <laughs> right now, this is old school football. Yeah, sure I mean, is. old school is, you know, before spread, before RPOs. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is just, here we here we come. What are you going to do about it. it? Third and one. Mog will get the carry. He's got the hole. Brought down, boy, he was trying to break three, and it's a good thing Capua just was able to trip Again. him up. If he doesn't, he's uh, still running. See Andrew Capua out here in the corner, going to make a great play as he comes through right there, and he's able to hold him off a little bit. Mount Pleasant moves the chains All on the 25-yard line. Mog, big hole, it bursts, and there he goes. 
huge hole up that line and Mog goes untouched. 26 yards for the touchdown. A nice little counter play and you'll see Mog will come off the corner here. We get a little X pattern right there and he makes great block by the guard pulling and Mog is yep. in the end zone. Yeah, there's a pulling guard does it cleared it path and it was just a huge hole for Mog to run through. This extra point is up and it is good. And, the extra point is good. and with 222 remaining in the first quarter, Mount Pleasant 13, Kemmicks nothing. And uh, Midland's got to find a way to stay on the, the offense to stay on the field. The, uh, it's just there, it's been a short field every possession for, for Mount, Pleasant Mount Pleasant. So Mount Pleasant's had it easy. Mount Pleasant's not a team you want to give that to. You want to let them earn a, a, a drive. So Mog with his second touchdown of the night, that gives him eight on the season. Leads the uh, SVL Blue Division. And for the third time this quarter, Luke Taylor will kick off for Mount Pleasant. Well, right now we've seen Midland's field position is awful, but Mount Pleasant's the real deal. I mean, they are playing very aggressive defense, and uh, their ability to drive the ball on Midland is uh, quite surprising. Evan Brown, excuse me, is doing the kicking duties for Mount Pleasant. He's a junior. Kickoff deep. Gordon will receive it at the three. Cuts up ahead. Boy, did a nice job to pick up extra yardage. It looked like he was going to be shut down at about the 15, and he spun for about seven, eight yard, more yards. Now, here's the thing, Dave. Mount Pleasant's kicked off three times. All three times have been in the one corner, and all three times the return has been to the middle, and Mount Pleasant has been able to cover it, which now leads you unable to, you have a long field. Instead of just catching the ball and running up the sideline, you already know where he's gonna kick it. That's a bread and butter Kemet kickoff. Yes, it is. Kick it to that That's corner. exactly what they do. Trips right, Money has got Johnstone and he's gonna be thrown for a loss. Money for Try to do that kind of a bubble screen three on the out to Johnstone, but uh, the Mount Pleasant defense is uh, just swarming. Loses three yards on the play. Well, what's impressed me the most about Mount Pleasant so far is their ability to tackle in space. I mean, they're out there doing a great job of tackling. Not a big surprise. Mount Pleasant always very fundamentally sound football team. So, second and 13. Pitch left. Got room to run. There he goes. Christian Gordon with a big gain down the left sideline. All the way down to the 30. That was right, a there. huge play for Midland. If nothing else, it flips the field. Finally exactly. with a minute 20 to go in the quarter. Now this is this is the old Midland pitch. Yep. Comes around the corner. Here comes the garden tackle. And we get a block out on the perimeter. Gordon advances the ball to the 30-yard line. Mount Pleasant. See, we're out there in the perimeter. We get the kickout block right there. We get a, a guard block right there, and now Gordon's off to the race. That's textbook chemist yes, football right Perfect. there. Perfect. Coach Joswack would be pr proud. Now we're going to go pitch right. And uh, Gordon did, did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Gordon. That time the perimeter block was not there. There's the Oiler weight forcing him back up and right back into the Oiler defense. No Second, Second and ten. ten. Midland pitch has been around a long time, Coach. 1954. <laughs> That's a long time. Money, swing pass. Oh, and Caden Jacobs uh, tried to cut up. Then be a late flag, on, flag the on the play. He tripped up. He looks like he's banged up. Jacob's in some pain right now. 
going to be a late hit on Mount Pleasant. Must be on 84 because he's getting an earful over there on the Mount Pleasant sideline. Oh, yeah, that's an easy call. Jacob's uh, already laying on the ground and he pounced him on the back. Got to make that call. So that's a huge break for Midland all the way down to the 14 yard line. Penalty brings the ball down to the 14 yard line. 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Midland trying to bounce back here offensively. Big run by Gordon. Flipped the field and then a big penalty. He's got Midland knocking on the door. Big series right here, Dave. Midland's got to make something happen. Pitch right. Got two blockers in front of him. Oh man, what a play from behind. That usually does not happen. That was a, a great play by number 19. Christian Gordon on the carry. Dimitri yeah, Griffin. 69. 69. 69, yeah. Sorry. Defensive tackle. Yeah, defensive Christian tackle. Elmore ran, on, Elmore ran, Turner. ran it down. That's a great play. Loss of the play. Second and 12. You figure you got those two blockers in front. You got going to have some room, and he just. Uh, Great hustle, and that'll be the last play of the quarter. Mount Pleasant on top, 13 nothing. And now the wind the shifts homecoming. to Midland's face. Midland will have the wind at their back. And uh, Coach, I was just, uh, it is a beautiful night here. You can see in the picture that the sky is gorgeous. Just kind of uh, sunset colors, and this can't be a much better place Not than that. Right here at Midland Stadium right now for some high school football. And I'd like to thank Midland High and Midland Public Schools for providing us with this facility that we can uh, broadcast the game from. Definitely. You know, without the fighting off the wind and fighting off the yeah. any element that's out here. Yeah. So great job by by the administration. Folks, you're watching this Midland High versus Mount Pleasant homecoming football game on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Communication cable channels 188 through 191 in Midland. You can also find MCTV under channel 99 on AT&T's Uverse. Check out MCTV website at cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV for playback dates and times. More dates and times to follow on MPS TV 190. You can also view this program online on the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. Well, here we go, second and 12 for the Chemex. <coughs> Two receivers left, right, Jacob is in motion. That's Christian Gording and take the direct snap and a big play by Ostrowski. Gordon looked like he may be headed for the end zone. Ostrowski just uh, darted in and tripped him up. A little bit of a wildcat there. Yeah. But it was interesting. Midland flipped the tackles, or flipped the tackle in an end, and in essence had an unbalanced and ran uh, the wildcat right there. So you can see on this replay, if Ostrowski doesn't make that tackle, Gordon probably scores. Money back to pass, looking to the end zone. Still on his feet, tries to run it, and he's not going to get anywhere. Good coverage by the Oilers and just swarming defense. See, this is, uh, when we take a look at this, we're going to take a look at this replay. Watch what happens to Money right in here. He's going to hesitate. He's got, a, he's got an opening, and as goal. you get experience, now watch what happens right here. He's gonna now he's gonna hesitate. Yeah. Do I still want to pass? Do I still want to pass? And there's no hesitation. Once you've made the decision, you got to go. So Fisher will line up for a 32-yard field goal attempt. Try to get Chemex oh, on the board. Midland moved. Big leg by Fisher, but uh, gonna turn it into a 37-yard attempt. Left guard yeah. jump. Legal procedure against the Chemex. Boy, that's a tough penalty to take on a field goal try. Fisher obviously has the leg. Money is the holder. Fisher also does 
the punting and kickoff duties for the Kemmings. That could be a big penalty, Dave. Yeah, I think the field goal was going to be good. Could be a bigger, well, the field goal was good. You need to get points on the board here. You've got to take advantage of this field position. So, replay the down. It'll make it a 37 yard attempt as money sets the tee on the 27. Snap is good, hold is good, kick up, plenty of distance, hits the upright, and good. oh my goodness. Good. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. <laughs> hits the upright, drops, hits the crossbar, and falls over for three points. A, a double carom. <laughs> a double carom. A double carom. Watch good. it from this. Oh, this will be a great oh, replay right here. Oh, what a shot right this is going to be, yes. Plenty of distance. It looked like it was going to be good. It started to fade. Cut the top and then doink and good. We'll take the three points. Midland closes the Euler gap to 13 to 3 here early in the second quarter. Pressed with Fisher's leg. Big leg. The, the first kick was phenomenal. It was. I mean, that would have been good from another 20 yards back. All right, this will be interesting to see how Mount Pleasant handles a corner kick. So Midland typically will try, just like Mount Pleasant did, kick it just inside the 10 on the right side as they kick it and kind of use the sideline as an added defender. Ostrowski, Joe Ostrowski number nine, be the likely recipient of this kickoff. And here goes Fisher with the kickoff. He does go deep to Ostrowski, catches it on the four, just like predicted, back in the corner. He tries to go up the middle, and for him, not much doing. Called it, coach. You try to return it to the middle, you're against, probably not going to get far. Against good coverage teams, you're not going to get very far. You have to recognize, you have to almost have automatics, which is uh, requires you to do a little bit of practice. A great coverage by Midland. Mount well, Pleasant will start the drive on the 19. By far the worst field position they've had tonight. Now, this is a crucial series because. If Mount Pleasant goes bone crush and moves all the way down the field and eats up that clock, that, that's a crucial area. Alec Kai Wilson is the fullback keeper for Ostrowski. Gonna get Ostrowski maybe probably a couple of yards. To get some decent surge. Yeah, uh, that's a unique first play. I, I don't know if he fumbled it or it was almost the um, center snapped the ball and he moved and nobody else did it initially. Right. It was like it something, was between something him and the did not go there. Malachi Wilson, 42, fullback. He's a pretty good size uh, guy. There's a nice job by the Kemic defense. That's Gordon. Um, there, was, there was a hole there, but Gordon uh, shot in and uh, tripped him up. And so it'll bring up uh, third and six for Midland. Big play here for this Kemic defense. If they can hold them here, they'll likely get ball around midfield. Just kind of reverse what happened most exactly. of the first quarter. You're kicking into that wind and that is crucial. Let me see Ostrowski put this one up. Back to pass, he goes, he's under pressure. Just overthrows his receiver. Ostrowski got drilled as he let it go. Volmering uh, barreled into him. He may have felt a little pressure as he tried to hit uh, Tyler Hoyneman, his tight end. Tyler Hoyneman is a big time prospect. He's been uh, offered at Central Michigan and uh, he has visited Notre Dame. So he's, uh, he's a quality prospect. Two-way player, plays uh, 
tight end and uh, defensive, line, defensive line. Four catches, 120 yards. High snap, brought down nicely by Ostrowski and a beautiful punt. Be fielded and fumbled. And he recovered it. The ball popped. Heckbarth, uh, Heckbarth uh, it popped out of his arms, but he was able to get it quickly, thankfully, for Midland. And this time they will take over on the 49 yard line. It's a tale of two quarters. It sure is. You got the wind, you're in business. Well, you know what? The Mount Pleasant guy had the ball, and uh, um, Heckbarth just pulled it right back from him. Heads up play by Heckbarth. Met Coach Metner is uh, calling timeout. The formation was mixed up. Not happy with the with the loss of focus there by his Let me tell offense. You, coaches hate that. They hate the waste of time out. They hate uh, the miscommunication that occurs. Yeah, there was obviously, uh, just didn't look right. And that play was probably gonna be doomed, so forced to call that time out. Coach Metner in his 11th season for the Chemex. Impressive 83 and 28 overall record. And uh, Facing Jason McIntyre, the Mount Pleasant coach, in his 13th season, 103 and 36. So both coaches with a lot of success under their belts. First and 10, Chemex, 9-01 to go in the second quarter, down by 10. Good field position for Midland. Pass out into the flat, He's got room to run. Good uh, coverage, good quick pass oh, by Money. Money. Heckbarth. Heckbarth on the reception for Midland. That's just his third catch on the year. You know, right good now, pick up on first down of five yards. I'm really impressed with both teams' ability to tackle in space. Both teams are doing a terrific job of that. Second 10 at the 46. Jacobs split wide to the right. Quick hand off to Gordon, spins ahead, he's gonna move the chains. Got a little crease and he just kept spinning and churning. Pick up about eight on the carry down to the 39. Nice, uh, nice surge by the offensive line and nice carry by Gordon. Well, I want you to watch the most is when Gordon gets in there, watch how he turns and spins here and gets an extra five yards. That spin right there keeps his legs churning. That's a, that's a really a terrific job. Good instincts by Gordon. He's the second leading rusher in the conference. Pitch right to Gordon and not much room to run. Mount Pleasant sniffed that out. And when he tried to spin it back left there, it just uh, lost, lost even play. more yardage. So, boy, that's a big loss on first down. Sets him back eight yards. Ball is back at the 47 yard line. Second and 18. Second and 18. And yeah, Mount Pleasant's defense has been impressive. He's really given up one, one, one big play. play and uh, one play. Everything else has been tough sledding for the Chemex. He's going to try to keep it. He does fire. It was a pass play. He just got rid of it. Swarmed under. That's number 82 you were talking about. Brings up third down. Heineman. It's pretty quick for a big fella. He's a, he's a true athlete. He's, he's, he's their best player. Third and 18. Gonna, he's going to make it difficult to well, the thing throw is, it downfield. They're getting penetration, so the play action, you know, the ability of the play action will occur. It, it's not a bootleg. It is a play action, and you're standing still allowing them to come. Money back to pass, throwing deep, downfield, and it is caught. What a catch. Hackbarth. Oh, wow. Money just threw a jump ball, and Hackbarth went up and got it. 
Great concentration. Incredible. That was up for grabs, and Hackbart grabbed it. That was one heck of a play. Now watch this. Hackbart's going to come down in here. He is covered right there by the defender, and both of them go up. They're just a big pass. And this money rolls to his right, tries to find Johnstone in a great defensive play to knock it away at the last second. It looked like it was going to be a TD for the Chemex, but Mason Pinwire, number seven, got his hand on it at the last second, knocked it away. Second and 10, Chemex. Money showed good patience there. He rolled to his right, let the um, pattern play out. And uh, he has a lot of zip on his ball, too, when he throws. Yeah, he does. There's that swing pass again. Jacobs drives ahead. He's not going to get much, though. My name is Jacobs. Jacobs brought down at the 14. Brings up third down. Third and 10 for Midland. Good play by Ostrowski again. They tackle in space. They tackle we in space. They run to the ball. That's a very difficult play to make yards on against a Mount Pleasant team. Just great pursuit by that defense. Third and ten. Again up to the flat. Got Johnstone. Makes one move, but swung down. Again number seven, Pinoir. Minimal gain, and uh, Midland's going to uh, go over the field goal again. This is one of those Mount Pleasant turn those into touchdowns, Midland into field goals. But try to get points on the board. Get as many good, as you can. Good call here. I yes. mean, it's going to be fourth and eight. It'll be a 29-yard attempt for Fisher. is up, plenty of leg, and it's good. 13-6, it's deceptive up in the press box. You, you swear it's good, and you but you have to wait, wait for you the have officials. To wait. Right down the middle. Field position for both teams yep. has made a big difference. Midland has had those two big plays that have produced two field goals. Yep. Field goal those those field goals have got to start to become touchdowns. Yep. Got to put it in the end zone. But they did cut it to one touchdown now. Remember, right. Midland blocked the extra point for Mount Pleasant. You just kind of feel uh, in this game, the kickoffs are just a huge part of it. They're, they're absolutely. You, you're, every time for both teams, you pin the opponent back, and it's kind of resulted into and, points. And in this case, with the Australia wind the way it is, when you have the wind, you can almost do anything. So Fisher last time, uh, nice high kick down to the four. Let's see if he can uh, produce the same and Midland's result. coverage is absolutely terrific. They have, and they have good players on this kickoff team just for that reason, to pin you in the corner. This time we feel it at about the seven. This time Oskarowski goes straight ahead. And he's wound down. Again, good coverage for Midland. Mount Pleasant will take over on the 23. Probably by just running straight ahead. It gave him at least five extra yards and trying to do the Exactly. Middle. But have a plan. Have a plan to block that because that's exactly what Midland wants you to do. They want you to run at them. So, see if the chemical defense can Stand tall here once again. 5.28 to go in the second quarter. Ostrowski's going to keep it. He finds a little crease, but it's closed quickly. Ostrowski. Post of blue jerseys out there. Drew Johnson, number 32, on the 
early hit. Sam Hine as well in on the stop. No gain on the play, second and Brady Woods also part of that tackle to bring about a three yard gain. Call it second and seven for the Oilers. Who's uh, Mount Pleasant's biggest deep threat as a receiver, do you think? Joe Ostrowski. Joe Ostrowski. The, the brother. He's averaging yes. 23 yards yeah. a catch. Very impressive. Ostrowski's going to go in motion to the right. We'll put three receivers out to the right. This time Mount Pleasant's going to call. That was very similar to uh, their first time when Midland that. called timeout. Exactly. Everybody went to one side of the formation and um, not what the – Coach McIntyre was looking for, so he burns a timeout with four and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Folks, you like watching your favorite high school events on MCTV? Stay tuned this fall for more games and events on the MCTV network. MCTV volunteers and staff will be televising the the H.H. Dow homecoming football game, marching band showcase, the Midland Dow football game, the Midland Dow volleyball match. You can check out MCTV on Facebook to follow us and get up-to-date up to information on all programming events on MCTV. As always, the, the cameraman, the whole crew, Matt, the whole gang just does a fabulous job of bringing uh, these productions to our community. All we year just, long. We're just happy to be a part of it. Yeah. Thanks for letting us do that. Low snap, little shovel pass. It worked the first time, not that time. A little quick shovel pass to Mog. But Capua sniffed that one out. No gain on the play. Third and seven for the Oilers. Andrew Capua has been a mainstay in that defense for a couple of years and he he did a great job right there yeah he's having a he's having a big yeah, game so far tonight right there that had potential to be a big game third and seven Ostrowski back to pass fires down the middle again it sails high there was some contact but that was uncatchable it was about four yeah, feet over his play. head brings up fourth down Fourth and seven, Mount Pleasant sideline not happy, but um, I don't. I think that was a good no call. The ball just it's uh, when he's fired it three times downfield tonight, Coach. All high. three uh, he's been very high. high. That means his elbow is low. Two receivers deep. High, very short kick. Midland wants to get out of the way. Don't let it hit you. Takes a chemic bounce, and Midland will get great field position. And the punt is down at the 40 yard line. The first and second the quarter are carbon copies. Midland had, a, Midland had a shank punt, and now Mount Pleasant does. I'm, I'm telling you, the wind has an effect on punters. They, they, they recognize the wind is in their face. They think they've got to get a little more giddy up in their, in their stride. And as a result, they get knocked off their rhythm. Mm -hmm. You really want to kick a low line drive, is what you really want to do. Yeah. And maybe get hit the turf and get a roll. So great field position for the Chemex. I think Mount Pleasant had drive starting on the 40 and the 49, just like Midland. Be a short game for Gordon. He kind of got a yard out of that when uh, he could have had a loss. Good determination on that run. I've been impressed with Gordon all year coming on in the third game and becoming a, a featured back. He's done just a terrific job. Time Jacobs in the backfield. Gordon will go in motion. Pitch. It's going to be a halfback pass. He's looking deep and uh, Broken up by Ostrowski. That was really great coverage by Ostrowski. Jacobs, number 19, was the quarterback uh, in the first two games. So he has the ability to pass. But Mount Pleasant was not fooled. They were not. 
he was uh, Ostrowski was was all over that. He was going to have to be a very precise pass to be complete. I think Midland fans are going to be tired of hearing the name Ostrowski. Might be already. The two brothers are uh, very um, dominant players. Yes, they are very dominant. Money fires and he's got. He's got him. No, incomplete. Boy, sure, it was a great pass by Money. And uh, Hackbarth unable to bring that one in. Boy, after that great catch he had earlier, that was an opportunity to move the chains. Right there. Oh, boy. This is a, a quite a decision on the part of Midland's coaching staff to kick this. I have no problem with this. I want to pin them back as far back as I can. I love the I love the thought right here. Good snap. Fisher hesitates, let his coverage get downfield. Beautiful kick. Fair caught by Ostrowski. And might have got away with one there. I would say, say no Midland got away with it. Yeah. One. It's kind of like no harm, no foul, but uh Usually you just can't make any contact on exactly. the catch. But great uh, job by uh, Fisher on the punt. Pins Mount Pleasant back on the seven yard line. 2.49 to go in the now, half. If you're Mount Pleasant, you want one first down and run the clock out. This time under center is Ostrowski. Is it to Mog? Goes off left tackle, he's met. Drives ahead for a couple yards, but good job by the Kemic defense. Zach Mock. Capua again Capua. Uh, in on that stop. You know, Dave, we haven't seen football like this all year. <laughs> you know that? Just, <laughs> just line them up. Fest. Line them up, and here we go. I mean, and there's some good blocking and some good defense going on. Castro Ostrowski makes a move, and he breaks loose. Heading down the sideline, finally corralled at the 40. And I think there's going to be a face mask. I think Jacobs might have, uh, when he tried to bring him down, may have grabbed the face mask. And that's going to turn it into a really big play. It's a really nice play out here. It's a quick pass out to Ostrowski. He makes a good move on the, on the play. It's a surprising to throw this ball. And now as we go along, he makes an excellent move on the DB. And but here comes Midland's pursuit. And I face mask or like, yeah, face mask. Face mask against the Kevix. Five yard play. variety. Five yard penalty on it. So there's your field position line. answer, coach. Quickly, Mount Pleasant brings it out to the 46. They may change their strategy now. Exactly. With 2.12 to go. Get in position for a field goal. You just keep working a little bit at a time. Well, Midland sure like to keep it within a one possession game going into the locker room. Pitch right to Mog. He's got a big hole. He's still on his feet. Big, turns a big gain all the way down to the 27, eight yard line. That was an incredible, stiff arm. incredible stiff arm by Mog. Well, he earned that carry. Just okay, we're gonna watch. Mog's gonna get a little toss and come right up in there and watch the stiff arm as we go through. So here, here comes the DB. And oh, excuse me, I'm going to knock you down. Mog again. No, it was the up back this time. He's going to plow ahead. That's uh, Hunter Norris. Norris brought down by Christian Gordon. Going to gain about five on the play. Minute 38 remaining. Mount Pleasant on the move. Their longest drive of the night. And uh, I think the Kemics are going to call timeout. I think that's, that's a good timeout. A terrific timeout. timeout. Midland on their heels. And uh, just catch a breather. Yeah. Tell them what you want to do. Explain to them what you're looking for. 
so Coach Metner just kind of, that's more recognizing the situation and uh, say, hey guys, we got to reset here. Here's what's coming. And so 13-6, uh, that one touchdown game. And uh, it feels like a big you, moment yeah. in the game. Yeah, it is. I told you it's going to be a slugfest. <laughs> it is a slugfest. It's a slugfest. And this is, they, Mount Pleasant had that big pass play, and then they went back to the uh, pound it theory. And they have plenty of time, two timeouts remaining, a minute and a half to go. See if the Kemic defense can come up with the big play. Bryce Albrecht. Is uh, got man coverage up here on Ostrowski, wide, split wide to the left. Big pitch, pass up the middle. Oh, that is a great play by the Chemics. Eli Gordon, that was going to be uh, inside the 10 yard line. But he and again, just uh, take a look. It's did just a, a great it's job. It's just a, a tight end up to shoot and an excellent hit at the, t at the point of attack. There's the fake right there. Good coverage and yep. safety came over and made a big play to knock the ball out. Third and five, Mount Pleasant's gonna call a timeout this time. That one does feel like a bit of a waste of timeout because it is a big play, but- uh, They were not in the right position. That, uh, That's what happened here. They may uh, wish they had that timeout back. That was an impressive play by uh, Eli Gordon. He's just a 10th grader. But uh, heads up, he had that big uh, tight end barreling down on him. And, he'd, uh, and he is a big tight end. Yep, and he just stuck it to him. That was big. That was going to be first down at about the eight. So uh, Midland's got uh, Money is a sophomore, Eli Gordon a sophomore, and uh, number 32, Drew Johnson, another sophomore on the varsity squad. Here we go, big play here. Obviously, third and five. Mount Pleasant on the march. Pitch to Mog. Picks his way, it's really close. He might be a little short. Yeah, he's going to be short. It's going to be fourth and one. And Mount Pleasant is going to use their final timeout. And now they really will be sorry they yep. they ruined that timeout. On it that alters time. their what yes, they can do. Exactly. Here. I don't. I don't know. What do you think? Field goal here? Or go for it. No, you got to go for it. I don't think their kicker is going to be able to put one 35 yards. I don't think they have kicked any field goals this year. Looking at the scoring statistics, Evan Brown is their kicker. He's got 17 extra points, but no field goals. And the way their line has been playing, they've got to feel fairly confident. Just now with no timeouts left, it's going to be a rush on every play. Well, this is where you call two plays. You get the first play to get the first down. If you don't get the first down, second play doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Mm -hmm. So you, you call two plays in the huddle here. So if we get the first down, we're going to call this play in the second. Maybe a quarterback sneak here. Trying to draw middle off sides. Pitch to Mog, and he's going to get the first down. They went wide on that instead of just running up the gut. So with a minute to See, go. They've already got the play called. Mog moves the chains down to the 17. A lot of time. A 
Ostrowski under center. Back to pass, looking for his brother in the end zone, and he's got him. Touchdown. This time he did not overthrow the that receiver. Was, that was the best pass he's thrown on. A nice, Easily. had nice glide on it. It, uh, it didn't have that heavy zip that he's had before. And uh, you Ostrowski probably have, had a step on them. And you probably have thrown that pass <laughs> a thousand times to your brother Since in the front yard. they were five years old. In the front yard to yep. your brother. Yep. Beautiful Where only pass. he could catch it. Yep. So a huge play. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. I think Midland was he's lined up off sides. He's for two. I am never a believer in chasing the point until the fourth quarter. That's my personal. <laughs> now you cut the distance in half, the two point conversion. I think Mount Pleasant's going to decline it. If you're going to kick, you might as well decline. Why change what you practiced a thousand times? Exactly. Brown has been very good on extra points this year. Cooper Phillips, the holder. Kick is up. And it's good. And, the extra point is good. and so with 50 seconds remaining in the half, how Pleasant goes up by uh, two touchdowns now. Midland is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on that extra point kicker. Tremendous amount. That was so close to being blocked. And yeah. it may even have been tipped, but he was able to get enough on it to get it through. Pretty well, impressive that was, drive that by Mount Pleasant. That was very impressive they Started drive. at their own seven, and uh, a couple, couple of big plays. Big plays, yeah. and then the touchdown. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see what kind of adjustments um, Coach Metner makes at half. Uh, Mount Pleasant's kind of controlled the game. The two field goals really were kind of set up on a couple big plays with good starting field position. But it's, it's tough to move on this Mount Pleasant defense. Brown will, the lefty will kick off again. Barth lets it hop, picks it up at about six. Drives ahead and again, good coverage by Mount Pleasant. That was a very big pickup right there. Yeah, could have been a disaster. Oh, that was, uh, I was sitting here going, oh man, thinking that ball's gonna bounce right back out in front of him. And Mount Pleasant with their great uh, kickoff coverage. That could have been scary. So good job by Hackbarth to field that on a short hop. So now the question is, don't do anything that you would regret right here. Yeah. Get out of here, get in the locker room. Gordon with the carry. Spins ahead for Christian about Gordon. three. Gordon does fight for every yard. He does. He's happy to fight for it. He, uh, he's got that spin move yeah. e in traffic that's picked up some extra stop. yards for him. So likely be the last play of the half. Gordon again, drives ahead. Christian Gordon. And that's gonna do it. Two teams will head into the locker room in this slugfest homecoming game here at Midland Community Stadium. Oilers on top 20 to six as the teams head into the locker room. And uh, Midland will go first. And the Chemic Marching Band will assume their position out on the field for halftime festivities. There's something a little 
very special about homecoming. Always have a big crowd and just a little extra energy in the stadium between the band, the teams, and the homecoming court. Just a great night here at Midland Community Stadium. So as they're getting ready, folks, the coverage of this Midland High football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, sign up for our new MCTV producer workshop. You'll learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video using Final Cut Pro editing software. It costs just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call the number on the screen, 837-3474, to sign up. You can learn more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. You can see the, the opportunities uh, to participate in the workshop on the screen there. So we are, we are going to send it on down to the field, folks, for the halftime festivities featuring the Midland Marching Band. Marching band. Band. band, band, take, take the, the field. field. This year's band features drum majors Rebecca Henning, Kyle Burks, Irene Klein, and Jared Gonder. As we move into the fall, the Chemic Band will open with a couple of selections to help warm you up. Glenn Fry's The Heat Is On and Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire is, well, not an ode to our stadium press box, but our opening selection in our Inferno show. Let's heat things up. Band, are you ready?
2018 Pop On Squad is under the direction of Ms. Katie Stearns and Ms. Crystal Forsberg. This award-winning award group, group is an outstanding an addition, addition to this to season's halftime time shows. shows. And, and tonight, tonight, the band, the band and the Pop On Squad will rock you to Cascada's big 2006 hit, Every Time We Touch. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, our 2018 Homecoming Court. First, we start with our principal, principal Mr. Jeff Jaster, escorted by Palmer Hannah Joswiak and cheerleader Aaron Vocal. Next, Next up is our, is our freshman, freshman representative. representative. First, First is, is Savannah, Savannah Willis. Willis. She is escorted by her parents, Amy and Mitch Willis. Savannah participates on the JV volleyball team, the soccer team, and is also a member of the student council. The second of our freshman representatives is Mitchell McMath. He is escorted by his parents, Angela and Mike McMath. Mitchell is currently running on the cross country team and intends to join the Midland High swim team in the winter. He marches in the MHS marching band and is also a member of the student council. Mitchell is looking forward to getting involved in the Midland High Drama Program. Ladies and gentlemen, your freshman representatives, Savannah Willis and Mitchell McMath. And now for your sophomore representatives. First is Olivia Carpenter, and she is escorted by her mother and father, Tara and Michael Carpenter. Olivia is currently on the Varsity Chemic Volleyball, Basketball, and Track teams. She is a proud viola player and in the symphony orchestra and is involved at Midland Free Church. The second of our sophomore representatives is Jarrett Wagner. He is escorted by his parents, Nikki and Jeremy Wagner. Jarrett is currently a member of the Chemic football, basketball, and baseball teams. He also is a member of the BPA. Ladies and gentlemen, your sophomore representatives, Olivia Carpenter and Jarrett Wagner. And now for our junior representatives. First, Edie Haas. She is escorted by her parents, Lisa and Kent Haas. Edie is a member of the varsity volleyball and track teams. She participates in the kickoff mentor program and is competing in the A.H. Nicholas Innovation Award competition. She has also competed at the state DECA competition. Our second representative for the juniors is Isaac Zimmerman. 
He is escorted by his parents, Amanda and Jeffrey Zimmerman. Isaac is actively involved in the KO Mentor Program, and in his free time, he enjoys playing the guitar and working at Great Lakes Ice Cream. Ladies and gentlemen, your junior representatives, Edie Haas and Isaac Zimmerman. And now for our senior representatives. Our first senior representative is Adia Haynes. She is escorted this evening by her parents, Ayana and Leonard Haynes. Adia is a proud member and co-captain of the varsity basketball team, the track and field team. She stays involved as an active member of the National Honor Society, kickoff mentor program, ambassador program, Kiva, and the Key Club. Our second junior rep, excuse me, our second senior representative is Jared Gonder. He is being escorted by his mother, Carrie Gonder. Jared is humbled to be a drum major of the MHS marching band, president of the National Honor Society, president of the Meister Singers, the school's chief science officer, logistics chair of the Midland County Youth Leadership, and a representative of the 2018 Homecoming Court. He would like to express his appreciation for the members of his class and for being a part of Chemic Pride. Ladies and gentlemen, Adia Haynes and Jared Gonder. Our next senior representative is Bailey White. Bailey is being escorted by her parents, Wendy and Tim White. Bailey is an active member of the National Honor Society and enjoys volunteering throughout the community. Bailey has also been on the Chemic Palm team for three years and currently serves as the Varsity Palm captain. Our next senior representative is Nathan Street Matter. He is escorted by his parents, Kim and Matt Street Matter. Nathan is a part of the Midland High cross country and track teams. In addition to that, he is the National Honor Society Vice President, President of DECA, and Grants Chair of the Midland County Youth Action Council. He is also a part of the BPA and his church's youth ministry. Nathan is very thankful for his classmates and this opportunity to represent them. Ladies and gentlemen, senior representatives, Bailey White and Nathan Street Matter. Our final female senior representative is Ellie Wardell. She is being escorted by her parents, Sarah and Nick Wardell. Ellie is a well-rounded senior, participates in varsity cross country and soccer, student council, and is a member of the National Honor Society. Outside of school, she plays soccer for the Michigan Jaguars. And our final senior representative is Tim Hackbarth. He is being escorted onto the field by his parents, Patricia Clancy and Mark Hackbarth. Tim is a dedicated actor and a member of the National Honor Society, the varsity football team, and the varsity baseball team here at Midland High. In his free time, Tim enjoys writing music and spending time with friends, and he plans on going to university to pursue a degree in the fine arts. Ladies and gentlemen, senior representatives, Ellie Wardell and Tim Hackbarth. And finally, your king and queen of homecoming 2018, Irene Klein and Jacob Miller. Irene Klein is being escorted by her parents, Cheryl Graves and Bill Klein. Irene stays busy as a drum major for the marching band and vice president of the Meister Singers. She has dedicated her life to music, as proven by the number of ensembles she is a part of outside of school. She wanted to thank her friends and family for supporting her in her future plans of becoming a music educator. Jacob Miller is escorted by his parents, Jennifer and Travis Miller. Jacob is a proud member of both the varsity soccer team and robotics team, like a boss, here at Midland High. He is involved in Science Olympiad and the Programming Club. Ladies and gentlemen, homecoming queen Irene Klein and homecoming king Jacob Miller. Let's have one more round of applause for the 2018 Midland High Homecoming King, Queen, and Court. And now, the Midland High Fight Song.
Kemet Band would like to thank the entire Midland community for their support of the Kemet Music to discount, discount car. car. We still have cards available if you would like to purchase one. They are $10 and can still be purchased in the Midland High School main office. The Chemic Band would also like to invite everyone to our annual marching band exhibition at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, October 17th. Bands from all over mid-Michigan will be performing along with your very own Chemic Marching Band. This year's Chemic Band will be performing our entire Inferno show. So come out and enjoy some great entertainment once again, 6 p.m. Wednesday, October 17th. And one final part of the homecoming best best for this year. You may have seen the parade earlier where we had a number of groups that had banner entries as well as the class entries. Here are the winners for those for club entries in third place, the Midland High Choir. In second place, the Midland High Chapter of the Gay Straight Alliance. And in first place, the National Art Honor Society. For your classes, in third place, the freshman class. In second place, the sophomore class. And in first place, for your classes, the seniors. And welcome back, folks, for the second half of today's homecoming game. Again, great homecoming festivities. Great job by the marching band, as always. And congratulations to homecoming queen Irene Klein, who's also a drum major, very impressive. And homecoming king Jacob Miller. Congratulations to Irene and Jacob. And the entire homecoming court as well. Just uh, be a great memory for for all these guys uh, throughout their lives, for sure. So we are, uh, teams are loosening up here for the second half. Midland down by 14, uh, 20 to six count. And uh, coach, what do you think's gotta happen here in the second half? Well, again, you're, you're in a low scoring game that could get away from you if you're not careful. You wanna keep, two scores is, is where I like to say, not to worry, we can get two scores. We're gonna have trouble getting three scores. So we need to be able to... So what we wanna do is be able to take this first series, stop Mount Pleasant, because they're gonna get the ball, flip that field a little bit, and make make easy touchdowns occur. Not long field touchdowns. That, those are tough against the physicality. I'm really impressed with the physicality of Mount Pleasant. They really fly to the ball and they do a terrific job of tackling in the open field. When we uh, when we looked at our uh, keys to the game, uh, we said Mount Pleasant had to get a big game out of their quarterback, they have. They had to get some easy touchdowns, they have. They were able to control the blitz and Midland really hasn't blitzed anywhere near as many times as they've done in the past. So we're gonna see, probably see a little more of that. For Midland, did, were they able to dominate the line of scrimmage? Not really. Uh, did they move the chains? Only if they had good field position and they were able to convert that into two field goals. And their field position through the kick game has been uh, okay, but Mount Pleasant has overcome that. No, no Midland has got to play a little bit better and be able to move that ball, move those chains, and keep the ball out of the hands of Mount Pleasant. And if they do that, then they're going to come back but they need to score a touchdown. Field goals are not gonna get it. Well, here's a, could be a critical part of this game. Mount Pleasant, the end of the half drove down uh, 93 yards to get a late touchdown, and they're gonna get the ball to start the third quarter here. Right. And, uh, you know, Midland certainly doesn't want to turn it into a quick three touchdown game. So that was, that was a monster touchdown, but that play's been open all night. You've got one-on-one, -on -one, the, the defender's out on an island with an outstanding receiver. That's pretty tough. Let's take a look at this highlight reel that we have, and uh, we'll be able to take a look at that before the start of the second half. 
Right, this is the blocked extra point. Yeah, well, here comes a toss from Gordon, and I love this. Good blocking. Uh, and Gordon d does turn it loose, but you can see he's, he's not running away from him. Right. And they're, they're able to catch up with him and hold it down to this uh, Karam field goal. That will, that will be in every highlight film we've got. <laughs> and now here we come back with a long pass, and the defender really just misjudged his jump. The Midland's able to get their field goal out of it. And so, now we're ready to start the second half. Yep, there we sit at 20 to 6, Mount Pleasant on top. And Midland's going to try to pin them deep here in that field position game. So kick field by Ostrowski at the eight. Tries to cut left, makes a spin move. Still on his feet, there's a flag on the play. Brings it out to the 34, but that's going to come back. It's going to be an illegal block on the Oilers, or a hold, I should say. And uh, going to be a big penalty. A, that's a big break for Midland right there. Uh, Mount Pleasant's going to be kicked back inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, instead of the 34, if it's uh, from where that flag is sitting, it's going to go back to about the 12. It's one of the most penal of all yeah. penalties in high school football. Well, in any football, I mean, you get, that, you get a long run or a good run, and now you're going to be driven back. Yeah, back to where the penalty occurred and back from there. I always thought another big one is when you kick off out of bounds is a critical mistake to uh, you give the team great field position unnecessarily. Exactly. Just trying to figure exactly where the mark this ball there was the that was uh, on Eli Gordon trying to sort this out I'm sure the confusion here still haven't set the ball down now they do at the eight yeah, huge penalty Put, in fact, a 26-yard penalty. But remember the last time they started from about this position, they marched quickly down the field. See if the Kemic defense is equal to the task here this time around. Boy, it's taking a long time to get this underway here. And they're going to huddle up again. Well, the umpire initially marked it incorrectly. So then they readjusted yeah. it. Ball's actually at the nine. Strauss is going to keep it up the middle. Boy, nothing doing. Gordon in on that stop. Capua. That's a play that's not going to work. No. That is not going to work. And you can see where the Midland line it's just going to jam this all up in here. And Sam Hine also. Here comes Gordon. Gordon beats. See, there's the stunner. And there's Gordon and, and Hine ready to make. Those two linebackers just took care of it. Yeah. Another big, great play by Capua. And it's going to be a loss of one. Second and 11. Past Ostrowski makes the move, and there he goes. He's got that quick move. Oh, he's hard to bring down. He's getting all the way out to the 28. They get him in space, and he's just a crafty runner. Again, that that DB is out there on an island, and you know, Dave, we, we try to watch watch what happens out here when he catches this ball. You see. The d defender did not break Ball down enough to make the play. We used to have a, a rule over where it says that you do long stride, long stride, short stride, and therefore you make that short stride right at, at the point of tackle. It's called a breakdown. Well, he didn't break down. Hog was hit at the line of scrimmage and kept Zach churning Hogg. forward. See, that allowed Mount Pleasant to get out of a hole and now they can run their power game again. 
but they know that's out there. I mean, there's that that one play right there will get them a first down every time they run it. It's about a three yard pickup. Hine had him initially, and then Heckbarth finally brought him down. He runs hard. Not by mistake, he's the leading runner in the conference. This time the quarterback keeps, and he drives ahead, still on his feet. And he may get the first down on just sheer determination. He, he's going to move the chains. Now it's interesting, by on that last play, Midland was a little confused, and their linebackers came towards the Twins to the field, and Mount Pleasant ran a uh, quarterback keeper to the short sideline. And as a result, there weren't enough people for Midland over there. He does, he breaks the tackle, he does a little spin move, and he gets the first down. Good effort on his part. Ball quickly out to the 37. Just feels like a critical drive for the Kemick defense to stop him. There's a sweep, and he's driving ahead too. He's gonna get about five yards on the carry. Ostrowski. With Midland, a nice run. Midland has changed their defense. They're initially, the first half, they were in a three-man front line with uh, four linebackers, and now they're in a four-man line with three linebackers and trying to get a little more beef up front because Mount Pleasant is coming right at you. She picked up six on the carry. The pitch to Mog, and he's going to dive ahead for the first down. Hackbarth on the care on the tackle. Hackbarth on the tackle. And they're just it's a smash mouth. Kind of more of the same for Mount Pleasant. Just not going to get. And again, they've slowed the game down. They're the just moving the chain. This should be a first down. Yeah, they're going to measure, but it's clearly a first down. At least from our vantage point up here in the broadcast tent. First down on Pleasant. Up the length of the football. And they do move the chains. Just, Mount Pleasant just feels methodical on offense and kind of on defense too. It's just steady, disciplined football. Got to try to get force a turnover. Yeah, force a turnover, that's uh, the key right here. Kind of change the momentum here. Mog with the carry. Pounds ahead for about three. You almost you have to be impressed with Mog's leg power. You do. He does drive hard, makes good drives with his legs, and is able to, uh, he carries, carries defenders. Cameron White in on the stop. Now, now here's the thing, Dave. We're looking at Midland High with five starters going both ways. Okay, this is the kind of offense that tires you out because you're on that field a yeah. long time. You never get tired on offense. You only get tired on defense. Kind of quick high, throws it high. Ostrowski trying to hit his brother. Ostrowski is incomplete. Kind of hesitated, a little hitch in his throw. And, uh, I think it threw off his rhythm a little bit. Bring up a third and seven. All of Ostrowski's passes will be high. I mean, his elbow is well below his shoulder when he throws the ball. And that allows you the ball to sail on him. So here we go. Big play for the Kamek defense. Trying to get off that field. Mount Pleasant. Worst case is flip the field position. Ostrowski back to pass down the middle. Got his man and he's gone. That was a great pass. That's the uh, big tight end we were talking about. 
Heinemann, and uh, he just threw it up high. He was threw taller than the defender. Beautifully thrown ball by Ostrowski. That was a dagger. That was a dagger. Again, the tight end coming right up the seam. Going to get over the top of the safety. Makes the play. Gordon just couldn't reach it. And 50-yard touchdown pass. Puts Mount Pleasant firmly in control here. Extra point is almost blocked again, but it's going to be good. And Mount Pleasant extends to 27 to 6. Boy, coach, long drive to end the half. Long drive to start the next half. It's, that's just uh, those are killers. And those are killers. Points and just uh, momentum and See, one psyche. Of the, one of the keys that we talked about that the quarterback has to have a big game, and right now he's having a big game. He's making some easy touchdowns, and we have yet to see the quarterback get sacked. You know, in, in right. all year long, we've watched tremendous pressure on quarterbacks from the so, which means the Mount Pleasant offensive line is doing a tremendous job. I mean, he was back there for a long time yeah. to throw the ball. He just let their wait until the tight end got behind his man and. Uh, Good zip on the ball. Really wasn't defended that poorly. He tried to get up and knock it down, but just had that half a step on him and a beautifully thrown ball. That was a 91-yard drive. Yep. In a very yeah. short time. I mean, it wasn't. They've had consecutive drives of 93 right. and 91. Kick this time Hit to the 16. Goodbye. Kind of seam. Cuts up, still on his feet. Hackbarth all the way out to the 46. Good where they run. needed a big play. And they got see, it out of Hackbarth. See, that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to kick across the field to where your, your strength. Take a look at this right here. Okay, so we'll see the kick go over on this side. We don't you don't want the ball on that side. You want the ball down in that corner. So now he comes up here, and all oh, your strength is over in the other side, and he breaks the tackle, and he, it's one last guy that holds him up and allows the others to get there. Good field position. Money back to pass. This is uh, Jacobs. Money Jacobs, complete. Bring up second and ten. We sure don't want to give him the Mount Pleasant offense the ball back right away here. And then come out passing on first down. Try to mix things up a little bit. Carter Grove not being in there is a, is a big loss for the Midland High passing game and defensive back-wise. Counter to Jacobs. Driving ahead for about six. Okay, Jacobs. Anton okay, on the stop. Midland needs a first down here. Cannot allow themselves to have to punt. I doubt if they will punt with the 27-6 yeah. inside the 50. I, I doubt if they will punt. Money back to pass. Got his man. That was a nice pattern, nice well-thrown ball, and Hackbarth hauls it in, and they'll move the chains. Big play for the Kemic offense. Daniel Swanson on the stop. Now take a look at this. This this is this is easy for money. There's nobody in here. This guy's dropping off. There's no under coverage here. So as a result, it's an easy pass. Just throw the ball out there. Little stop pattern. He threw it to a spot. Gordon's gonna drive ahead for about four. Christian Elmore Turner. Definitely need to answer with this touchdown. You need to answer their touchdown with a touchdown.
Pitch right to Gordon. He's got a hole now. He's going to spin ahead, moves the chains. He just keeps turning ahead, fouled his blockers, kind of rode his blockers for about five yards. It's a good job by. Uh, this is a good job out here. Play Cameron comes out White. in here. We're going to see the guard and tackle come around. We're going to have a little reach block right there. See, there it is. They got the reach block. The end went to the inside. Linebacker didn't cover. And so as a result, you got a good good seam in there to run. First and 10 Chemix. Again, finds Hackbarth for about seven. Well, it's a, just a good Hackbarth. timing pass where, you know, he threw it before the receiver made his break. One of those were if he waits too long, it could be picked off. So uh, good timing by Hackbarth and Money. Second and four. Money's going to keep it. Still on his feet. Round to the right. Cuts back up the middle. Inside the 10-yard line. McKevick's moved the chains again. This is a very good drive. Very good drive. Two easy passes and a few good runs. Going to be first and goal from the eight. Got to punch it in, though. Field goals aren't going to do it. First and goal from the eight yard line. Jacobs up the middle, drives into the Touchdown. end zone. Good hard run. Good hard run. He met the defender at about the one. He was not going to be denied. Okay, we see Jacobs here coming back off the corner. Got an easy play in here. Good blocking up in the front. And he gets in that little, squeezes right through that little hole and then meets his guy in the, he drove him two yards into the, back into the end zone. Extra point attempt for Fisher. Good hold by good, money. Good catch, good hold. Okay, now we're back to a manageable 13 points. 14, 14 points, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns, but very manageable. The task is now for the Chemic defense to stop this Mount Pleasant attack. But that might give, just re-energize re Midland. The momentum can feel shifting slightly, but uh, you just don't want to let the Oilers counter once again. Turnover sure. Well, you know, it's nice. interesting. I, I, looking at those two series, um, it was like both defenses came out flat. You know, I mean, it, the offenses were good. I mean, I'm not saying that. But it looked like both defenses in that in those two series came out a little flat and allowed the offenses to go down the field and get touchdowns, as opposed to what we saw in the first half, the physicality of the yeah. defenses. So Fisher will line up for the kick. Ostrowski waiting at the seven yard line for the return. They try one of those high pooch kicks here. Kicks here. Well, he's going to drill it. He's going to catch it at the five. Ostrowski finds a little hole, but he's going to be hauled down around the 23. Ostrowski on the return. Sam Hine, initial hit. Hine in on the stop. And Mount Pleasant will take over. We said before, their last two drives have been First 93 yards, yards and then 91. Time for the Chemic defense to step up here. The stop here is big, Dave. Stop here is big. Especially having them kick into the wind. Gotta take advantage of the wind. Mog on the carry. And we drive ahead for about four. Ball, 
Parker. Hoffman in on the tackle, number four. Will Hoffman and Herschel hit. Hoffman, you know, right now, maker. right now, Mount Pleasant's line is taking charge. I mean, in in the series that we've had here, they're taking charge. They are driving back off the ball. Usually, you don't see that too often. Little shovel pass. Oh, terrific but play! Great job. That's Hoffman again. Terrific play from Hoffman. Was that little shovel Hoffman. pass to that, Wilson? The hole was there and. He filled it. Third and three for the okay. Oilers. There, there is there is a good hole right here for this play. And watch, Hoffman is just going to come up and make the play right. Copula came up, and there's Hoffman right there to stop it. Beautiful yeah. job. That, that could have been a big play. It was actually well executed offensively. Yes, it was. And a good read by Ostrowski. Big play for the Chemex. Hand off to Mog. He is going to, it's close. I th He's short. Depends on the spot. Looks like they're giving him a favorable spot here. <laughs> oh, they got it. They're gonna give him the first. first down. Just hard, hard run. Good blocking at the point of attack. And then just this last little turn and twist yep. got him in there. Beautiful job of running. Christian Gordon did a good job filling that gap. Yes, uh, he did. But just the uh, kind of that power and elusiveness of Mog to get that extra yard. He's going to carry it again. This time, Capo will hold him to about three. Capo has got a lot of tackles in there. Capo is a very good player. Copy the hind Volmering. Bit impressed with the fill by the secondary making coming up to make big yeah. plays. Strauss going to keep it. Their runners are just good about getting that extra yard or two. Just by lowering their shoulder and driving. It's another big third down, this time third and one. Christian third Gordon in on one. the tackle. Well, you know it's going to be Mog behind 82. Wherever 82 is, Mog will be right behind him. And Mount Pleasant is chewing up a lot of clock here, too. It's Mog. He's going to get the first. Behind 82. Yep. 82 is the wing. They've run 82 most of the time. Yep. Good call, coach. And uh, Mount Pleasant moves the chains once again. First down, Mount Pleasant. To the 46. It's tough for the middle crowd to really get into it because Mount Pleasant just like pound, pound, pound. Well, 82 is out right now, which means we're going to throw the ball. <laughs> Except he's not in there to throw it to. No, him. You, they won't throw it to him. Ostrowski's not in there yeah. either. It'll be about a yard pickup. That was extremely good defense on the part of Midland. It was Bob brought down by Jacobs and Capua. Short gain on the play. Outstanding down. defense. It might have been Griffin on the carry. Dimitri Griffin, the junior. Mog will come back in, as will Joe Ostrowski, number nine. Joe Ostrowski is a junior. Quarterback Jackson, his brother, is a senior. Second and nine. Ostrowski back to pass. Will the shovel pass again? Oh, great play. That time, that was high, number 42. Sniffing it out. Solomon Thomas on the tackle. Solomon Thomas. Okay, now watch right in here where the play's going to go and watch what happens. They're right up in the middle of it all. See that and they just let him go and he made the play. Yeah, 52, Solomon Thomas actually making that stop, the junior defensive lineman. 
And Mount Pleasant's gonna let the clock run out on the third quarter. Each team with long touchdown drives in the third quarter and we are back to that 14 point spread that we were at halftime. And, uh, and so middle defense being called on to stop the Oilers. Okay, now this is the third series of the quarter. They were only right. three series in the quarter. Midland had one, Mount Pleasant's had two. Yeah. And Mount Pleasant hasn't given up the ball. This right. is exactly the kind of game Mount Pleasant wants. Don't let the other team have the ball. So folks, you want to see all the new ways you can share your story on through MCTV? Now you can create a TV show, put your videos on YouTube, promote your programs on social media, and even create an audio podcast to reach a whole new audience. To learn more, call MCTV at 837-3474 today. You can find our YouTube channel and podcast by searching MCTV Network's Community Voices. I'd also like to thank Jimmy Johns for their support of tonight's production. Appreciate the uh, had a really outstanding sandwich at halftime. This is Jimmy Johns. Well, here we go, third and long, third and 12 for the Oilers. Middle defense got to come up with a stop here. Ostrowski back to pass, fires down the middle. Oh, through the hands, that was, the ball was on the money. And uh, Luke Taylor with the intended receiver and it's almost like it was hotter than he expected. He's got a pretty good arm. He does, he has a hot arm. I yeah, mean, it, it, it was the hot. ball has a lot of spin on the ball. So, big stop for Midland. Absolutely. Ostrowski will punt for the Oilers. Gordon back deep to receive. And good kick. It was brought by Hackbarth. Be tackled at the 24 at the 19. Ball came loose, but they uh, whistled him down. They covered by Andrew Hyde. First attempt for the Kevicks. Well, that could have been a disaster. So down by two scores. Okay, the Kevicks stopped them, Dave. Now, now they have to do something. They got to drive the field. 81 yards. That is the task in front of them and right it, now. And again, I thought Mount Pleasant was a little lax on their defense in the last series. They didn't have the quickness or the physicality they had earlier. We'll see if it's any different. John Stone will take it. Room to run. Nice job picking his way for about six Johnny yards. Johnson. That was a pretty good pickup by Money. Yeah. On a ball that. Brought down by Pinler and Hunter Norris. Second and four situation for Midland. Johnson gained six. Brings see the uh, replay there. Four. Good job by Johnstone. It's going to be Jacobs on the carry. Drives ahead for about three. Well, Mount Pleasant Jacobs thinks he fumbled here. it. We're going to call it Hunter Jacobs Norris down, though. Third, down. Third and a long one. Well, you know it's going to be Gordon. Third and one. Boy, it's a big play for Midland. Got to move the chains. It is Gordon. No, it's Jacobs. Oh, that is great effort. He was stopped behind the line. Boy, they're not giving him much of a spot there. I thought he got a little this more than that. Really, an, yeah, I did too. Really, a good effort. Right there, he is stopped, and then he turns forward. Yeah, he reached ahead. Yeah, mate. It's a tough one that for the fish. Terrific gonna, effort, though. Middle's going to go for it. You kind of have to here, don't you think? I mean, it's fourth and one. Still a lot of time to go. 
but Wait, just yeah, they're just trying to draw him off. Coach Matner's gonna call a timeout. Rethink this decision, I think. I mean, you don't get it. You're well, this is the this is the greatest problem with the shotgun, and that is you lose the quarterback sneak. Yeah, you know it's one thing, like the, the pros do it. They sometimes are in shotgun, sometimes they're under the. But they don't run a quarterback sneak. But teams that run both, you never want to give up that quarterback sneak. Because that, so let's face it, third and half a yard success rate is very high. <laughs> yes, it is. On the quarterback sneak. Because really, there's not a whole lot you can do about it defensively. So Midland's going to change it up and punt. Well, this is a smart move here. Yeah. You don't get it. You're almost, almost conceding Game's the game. Game's over. Mount Pleasant's not buying it. And, Mount, and Midland is short a player. Midland's confused. Mount Pleasant has nobody deep. They're like expecting the fake. So that's where he should kick a line. Oh, and he kicks it. Short punt. That's where when nobody's deep, you gotta kick that line drive and just yeah, the get the roll out of it. So Mount Pleasant will take over on their own 49. So Midland got the stop, but just unable to move the ball. Just cannot let Mount Pleasant score here. Big crowd here tonight. Quick pitch to Mog, and there he goes. On the races, and he, Gordon had the angle. He's tripped up. But Mog bursting ahead. There's a big it's hole a, on that left side. Now they ran this play. They ran this play earlier, where they they make a little fake this way, and they make a little toss that way, and gives them everything they want. There's the fake, there's the toss. Good trap blocking. Mog gets out into the open, and he's gonna trip over his own feet right there. You know who made that block on the edge? 82. 82 is a player. Wherever 82 is, that's where the ball is. He just sealed it right off. Mog again, left side, going behind 82. He's gonna pick up a couple. Brought down by Capua. Capua on the stop again. I would, as a coach, I would challenge them to, to beat me away from 82. I'd be slanting the line or having somebody coming hard off the corner just to jam up wherever 82 is. Take him completely out of the game. Force them to go with their less, less than better players. Second and eight, ball in the 17. Eight and a half remaining. Midland down by two touchdowns. Cannot afford to let the Oilers score here. Running left again is Mog. He is tough to bring down. Mog brought down by Gordon. They like running left, don't they? Third and five, maybe four. Field position, Dave. Field position is everything when you're playing these two teams. 82 to the right. They might slip, slip them out with a pass here. Nope, run oh left this time. Goodness. And it doesn't That's, go anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, you can, that's what I'm saying. I'll force, force them to run to their weaker players. It'll bring up fourth down. They must not have a lot of confidence in their field goal kicker because you really ice the game here with a field goal. It'd be about a 31 yarder. 
Set fourth and. Well, it's either a pass to, it, it's going to be a pass. It's either going to go to Ostrowski or 82. Ostrowski out wide to the right. Man coverage. So Mount Pleasant tried the same thing to draw Midland offside. Midland didn't bite. And Mount Pleasant will use their first timeout. A lot of similarities in this game, except kind of the difference, really. Honestly, the difference is those two really long drives by Mount Pleasant to end the first half and start the second half. 10 o'clock starts at the new entrance for the new village where they have the Okay, I've been impressed with Mount Pleasant. I've been impressed again with how, how they run to the football. I've been impressed with their offensive line blocking. Uh, I've been impressed with their uh, ability not to make a mistake. We haven't, had, I don't think, I think we've had one turnover in the game, the fumble. Yeah. And so it's been a, a great clean game and a few penalties. So, I mean, it's just been a great game and it, there's only 6.52 left in the game. And usually you're sitting here and this is, it's halftime at this time <laughs> in most of the games we've been to. Well, here we go. Fourth and four. Critical play for Midland. Play action pass. Oh, wide open is 82. They just Touchdown forgot about him. He just, they bit on the play action and uh, tight end release and there was okay, nobody near easy. Him. This is one of the easiest plays in football. Here's 82 coming off into the corner. There's the, the play action. Make the good fake and throw it to him right in the corner. There he goes. Everybody bit. Nobody even close. Yep, bit on the play action. Boy, in a fourth and four, you got to be thinking pass. Extra point. Almost blocked again, but it goes through. Mount Pleasant extends to a 21 point lead, 34 13. They just have that offense in uh, clicking. It's bone crushing. I mean, that's exactly all I can say is that it wears it's, you down. It, it's bone. It wears. It, remember what I said? Midland has five players going both ways and so when you have that number and you're on defense and the other team is pounding you and pounding you you get tired and you make mistakes like that that happen right there and uh, your offense has got to take over and it's got to be able to make some plays it's got to make some easy plays in reality Midland's only had a couple of easy plays all night yeah and no touchdowns two field goals Oh, well, sorry, touchdown one, one touchdown, that's quarter. right, yeah. third quarter touchdown. Well, see if we can make a big play on special teams here. Gordon Hackbarth back deep to receive for the Chemex. at the eight. Ooh, nice little move there. Cuts up. There he goes. There's the big play of special teams. Christian Gordon going the distance. Gives How about the that? life. That was a great return. He kind of hesitated to just survey the field and exploded through the well, hole. We're going to see the Mount Pleasant man in position. But again, again, I want to show you this. When I talk about long stride, long stride, short stride, we're gonna see the Mount Pleasant player right in the middle here, and he's he's gonna be in position, but he didn't he doesn't make that short stride. See, you'll see it right in the middle here. See, he's still, see, he's out of he couldn't a, make the stride at the right time. Now everybody else is everybody else is in long stride, 
Great, and and so a, is Gordon. Great move by He's Gordon. He's in long stride. Definitely a long stride. Oh, what a run. What a run. That was that was fabulous return by Christian Gordon. Well, now we're in back to the two touchdown yep. philosophy. Still six and a half to go. But we're running out of time. we got to make a stop here. Extra point is good by Fisher. Max Fisher's got a leg, doesn't he? He does. It's impressive. Yeah, he does. That's good. That could be a factor for Midland as this season goes on. You know, get a, that's right. a weapon you can get a long field goal. Think back. When was the last time Midland didn't have a kicker who had a leg? Yeah, it has been a hallmark of the Absolutely. Midland High program for a long time. Well, we've got a ball game. We got a ball game, but the middle of the defense has got to got to make a stand here. No pleasant offense has been in control the second half. It's so hard to stop. Do an onside kick here, would you? Not yet. But then again, do one of those pop-up kicks. The short. I would do the pop-up kick to about the 35-yard line or so. Absolutely. Make a guy that's not used to 20, making a play make a play. Line. Right on the 20. Oh, pleasant scooching up. They are sus suspicious of this. They're going to kick it long. Gets balls loose. Ostrowski picks it up inside the 10. Goes down at about the 16. Very effective uh, kickoff. About six and a half minutes to go. Midden down by two scores once again. After that electric return kickoff return for a touchdown by Christian Gordon. Let's see if the defense can get a strip here, make a play. Mog, get a couple. It depends on how long Mount Pleasant can hold this ball. Zach Mog, the ball for you. Jack Barthen on the stop. Gonna get yeah, a couple out to 20. Mount Pleasant will milk the clock. As long as they can. Hog again, running left. Uh-oh, he breaks loose. He's on his horse. Gordon going to try to save the touchdown. He does. Great speed by Gordon. But Mog was gone, but boy, they run that left side again. That play has been productive. Been huge. Here comes the replay. And we're going to see again running over here. We're going to see great blocking coming down. Mog getting up into the chute and then just breaking free. There's the block on the outside. 82 just cleaned house, yep. and now, and this is a great play by Gordon to run him down. A huge play all the way to the 16, from one 16 to the other. Hmm. Quarterback sneak by Ostrowski. Oh, what a call. That was a heck of a play call. <laughs> Surprise everybody. It's been a steady dose of Mog. And uh, he just followed his center right up the gut. Broke a tackle I'm gonna, and scored. I'm going to, this is really amazing to me because there's nobody in there. It's like it fooled everybody. And it did. It just, he runs up in there and he's in the end zone. It's like it almost even fooled yeah, some fooled. of his teammates. Next thing you know, he's running into the end zone. It's 
Almost like he can call that audible himself or something. Extra point blocked again. We've been getting good pressure on those extra points. I, I have to tell you, Dave, I would have never expected 40 points against Midland. Micah Scheiber yeah. with the big block, got his big mid up there, swatted it away. Great job by low, low Scheiber. Kick, low kick. Bringing the score above pleasant 40 with a high 20. Well, you know, yeah, just, it's just kind of like a wear down effect. Pound and pound and pound. And then they're, they have the talent to throw the ball downfield. And uh, okay. got, they got some playmakers. I'm going to tell you, I didn't know what to expect from Mount Pleasant, but I'm impressed. I'm impressed with their, as I say, I've, I've been impressed all night with their physicality, and I've been impressed with their quarterback. But Mock, he runs hard. Yep. But, again, they've had – great field position and they have flipped the field they haven't been able to be stopped no they yeah they just get big plays on the ground too and then they got some playmakers both Ostrowski's and um, big tight end Heineman Little squib kick. It's gonna out go of out bounds. of bounds. Kickoff goes out of bounds. Yes. And then I will take over at the 35 yard line. Well, that makes some sense. You're not gonna risk another long kickoff return. Gordon's obviously an explo explosive player. Show great speed on the return, and then he also showed great speed to mm -hmm. stop that long touchdown run by Mog. Midland first and ten at the 35. Five minutes to go. There's been a lot of action in this game in the last two minutes on the clock. Money rolls to his right. Looks for Hackbarth. Got him. Be about a nine-yard gain. Now, money no, I like that. Nice, easy throw. Get out of the rush. Make some plays. Second and one. Clock runs. Mount Pleasant has put their reserves in, all except 82. Ostrowski's still back there at safety. Yeah. Gordon's going to run it. Nowhere to go. Gordon, shy of the first down. Yeah, except for their, uh, the Ostrowski's, Mog, and yeah, I mean, Heinemann. Yeah, those guys are not out, but it's defensive linemen out, mm -hmm. linebackers out. Third and one. Wasn't able to get the first on that run. Money's going to keep it. And boy, that's oh, great he, effort. He's got it. Penniman yeah, had him behind the line of scrimmage, and uh, Money uh, was not going to be denied. He's going to move the chains. Good move there. That's a good run. He carried Heineman about two yards to pick up the first down. Don't forget, he's only a sophomore playing quarterback. He's going to be a good one. Gordon hauled down. Christian Gordon. Had a little crease, but Hunter Norris hauls him down for a short game. We're under four minutes to go. You see, the problem that you have, and this is a serious problem with the Midland pitch from shotgun, is that it's one count too slow from the previous uh, under center snap. And that one count allows a defensive lineman to recover. Money Good spins run. and it's going to get the first down. Good run. Oh, and boy. a penalty. That's going to be on Midland. It's kind of a late block after the play was over. Going to set the chemics back 15. Jake Shell on the tackle. If you take a look at it. Good run by Money. 
can see right there at the very end. Kind of a frustration, frustration play. Block. Yep. Personal foul against the Chemex. All the way back to the 40. Midland does get, does get the first down out of it. It'll be first and 10 from the 40. And they gotta move the chains. First down. Time to get those chains in the right First spot. The ball's at the 40-yard line of the Money back to pass. Hackbarth is favorite target tonight. Going to get about seven or eight on the play. Again, giving them a lot of space. Look at the space that's out here. Well, Mount Pleasant be definitely content to give up yes, eight yards. Yes, they're going to give it up easy. Counter Jacobs, hauled down by Jacobs, the ball carrier. Here's your guy, 82. Heineman. He's a load. So third and three for the Chemex, two and a half to go. Hand up to Gordon, he's stopped short, I think. He's gonna be just shy of the first down. Fourth and one. Fourth and one for the Chemex. Going to be Gordon. That was a good hard run. Yep. He's, good hard he's run. He's still competing. Boy, he, he could have thrown a flag on Mount Pleasant there. But they will move the chains. Gordon's a good player. Runs hard. He's got good speed. Yeah, he's very good up here. And we do have some good blocking in the seam there. See how you have that right there? And he gets up there. And he's, see how he falls forward for that extra little bit of yards? I, I love that. Uh, yeah, there. That was a dangerous pass. Yeah. I, I would tell our quarterbacks, if you roll to the right and throw left, get in a defensive position <laughs> to make a tackle. Because it's coming back at you. It's coming back at you. If you roll to the left and throw right, just run off the sideline because we got to find somebody else. You can't throw back over across your body. Mount Pleasant's going to call timeout. I think they were missing a little confusion on their, their lineup. So with a minute and a half, you can see the Chemic band members, their great halftime performance, getting ready for their post game. Show. So, Midland's three game win streak uh, likely come to an end here. And looking ahead, the next three games at Bay City Central, we got John Glenn, and then the big city title game on the 19th against Dow. Three and three after tonight. And we'll 
have to run the table after this game to make the playoffs. Money back to pass, steps up in the pocket, fires. That was a great pass by Money. Look, he's going to fire downfield. He saw Christian Gordon on the far side, and he uh, put it where only yeah, Gordon can catch it. We're seeing the potential in Money yeah. with that kind of a play. You're able to step up in the pocket, and he made an excellent play out of it. Looked like a Maxwell throw there. Just had a lot of heat on it. Perfect spot. Interesting there, an empty. And Money steps up. He's got Jacobs, moves the chains again. Mount Pleasant is opting to, to yeah. uh, play deep pass. Don't put any rush. Keep yeah. everything in front of you. We'll give you those. We're not, we're not going to. When you're an empty, most of the time you see these these uh, defenses come after you. Gordon the carrier. Scoot ahead for a couple yards. Gordon the ball carrier. Three. Under a minute to go here in the ball game. Money out to Jacobs, a bubble screen. He's going to drive ahead for about four more. Short of a first down. Just short. Third what? Pleasant is going to call a timeout again. They had confusion on their substitutions. About Pleasant, their last timeout. People probably wonder, say, why in the world they call a timeout with 29 seconds? But they just had so much confusion, it was going to be a disaster. Is this a case where, you know, obviously down by three scores in the last couple of minutes, probably not going to be able to pull it off, but. Coach Metzler's looking at this as almost like two-minute drill yeah, practice. Let's get, let's let's see what Steve Money or uh, Al Money can do. Mm -hmm. Let's give him an opportunity, turn him a little bit loose, take a look at a little more of an open offense. I see nothing wrong in that. No. Midland played it very close to the vest all night, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're going to see that this is an opportunity for Money to. Oh. No, we're not. No, we're not. He's out. <laughs> He's out now. So they are put. Um, Heckbarth is in at quarterback. Jordan Hicks will take the carry. He slam down. Jordan Hicks, the ball carrier. And they're just going to let the clock run out. So, well, our final will be Mount Pleasant 40, Midland 20. And All right, Dave, let's talk about the ramifications of this game. Mm -hmm. First off, Midland is now 3-3. Three and three. Yep. So they have to win out right. in order to – and the reason I say they have to win out, because 5-4 and four is not going to get it with their schedule. Right. The, the loser teams from Bay City – and Saginaw are going to drag it down. Mount Pleasant is now 6-0, yeah. and oh, so they're in. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to win the league, they have to beat Dow High. Yep. Dow High cannot afford to lose to Mount Pleasant because what we're going to end up having is at the last game, Dow and Midland playing for a playoff spot right. and the other one going home. Yep. So it really gets exciting now as to, you know, you can't make a mistake. For Midland, they can't make a mistake the rest of the way. Fortunately, their schedule is in their favor. Midland, for sure, it's going to be in a situation where they're going to have to beat Dow to make the playoffs. And exactly. It would be pretty dramatic if they were both in that spot. City title, rivalry, and Well, I, I, I truly person. expect for both of them to be in that spot. I mean, I, I expect that they'll both be 5-3 and three going into the game because I'm – you know, I'm really impressed with this Mount Pleasant team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Dow's defense has been a little bit suspect. So, but back here, 
Midland, is, I, I saw some sparks from money, but I love the running of Gordon. Yep. Uh, but I was, uh, I was so impressed with Mount Pleasant's ability to attack Midland's defense hard. The way, the way you you would love Midland's de- to be attacked. You know, yeah. just come here. We come. What are you going to do about it? Well, tonight they did something about yeah. it. All right. Here comes our highlight reel coming up of all the big plays. We'll probably see that carom kick again. And yeah, this is uh, <laughs> the first block first extra point. Block extra point. Here comes. Uh, here's the toss, and you see now good r- movement and great running from Gordon. Here, here is the carom kick. Doink, doink, good. This is a, an outstanding pass, but a, a much better reception mm-hmm. where he goes up over the top of everybody to make the catch. This is our Max Fisher field goal. And another really good run, hard run by Jacobs. I believe this is the, uh, kickoff return. the kickoff return by Gordon. Just got shot out of uh, a yeah, cannon. He, that was a terrific job of running. Yep. Yeah. Terrific. Like that little track <laughs> dive. Hey, leave no end. doubt, you know? Yeah. And this is a block kick. Uh, Shriver just reached up and blocked it. Good job. Yep. So, again, homecoming 2018. In the final score, Mount Pleasant 40, Midland 20. And uh, we'll look forward to our next broadcast. Folks, again, this is Dave Marsh, Frank Aldemore, and the whole MCTV crew. Happy to bring you the action tonight. And we will see you next time, folks. Good night, everybody.